Hey everybody, it's been a while since I've gotten to do a No Better Sew Better video and I had a customer, um, one of my local customers actually contact me and ask about an issue she had with her machine. It's new to her. Um, it's not this exact machine, this is just a Singer Simple. Um, what I'm going to show you here is fairly universal for any of the front loading machines. So the issue that she had is that um, something happened that basically all of this fell out of the machine. And I can understand um, if you are new to a front loading machine or a side loading machine even and have never done anything with these machines, this can be really um, scary. But I can assure you this is normal. So I want to go ahead and show you what you need to do when this happens because it does happen. Um, the other thing I want to mention is that this is also um, what you need to do to clean out your machine occasionally. Now this doesn't replace service, but you do need to keep threads, and in fact you can see a thread down in there. Um, I'm going to grab a pair of tweezers and I'm going to pull this thread out. I haven't actually serviced this machine yet, but you can see thread does gather in here. And a lot of times that's because it gets pinched between the hook and the, um, the hook carrier here. So. Uh, if you have not cleaned your machine out in a while, I suggest doing this really briefly with every bobbin change. Um, let me grab my pipe cleaner. Now what I suggest, um, there's a number of different things you can use. Some machines come with a little brush that you can use to brush out in there. You can buy a paintbrush that doesn't shed to use in there. My most favorite tool is just a pipe cleaner. Um, in fact, we keep these in a jar at the front counter in our shop so that if someone needs one to keep in their accessory tray to clean out once in a while, it's my favorite tool and that's because it's soft and flexible. You're not going to lose it in the machine, you're not going to damage anything, but it's a lint magnet. So this machine is not very dirty, but you can use this to kind of poke around in the machine. I want to remind you that you never want to use canned air in any machine. One, it has moisture in it. But two, the bigger issue is unless you take all the covers off to um, apply air, you're just pushing the lint and stuff further in the machine. And any place that's got grease or lubricant on it is going to grab that. And eventually your machine is going to seize up because it soaks up all the lubricant. So please, please don't ever use canned air in your machine. Um, but just poke around and see. Now, if you've been sewing masks or something very linty, you might have like a whole coating of things here. And then for these pieces, you can just wipe them down with a cloth and maybe even use a little Windex if you need to, but that's all you really have to do. So let's talk about getting it put back together. This is very easy. If you're going to lubricate your machine, read your manual first <clears throat> and only use sewing machine oil. Please don't use um, anything for guns, boats, cars, bikes, nothing but pure sewing machine oil. It should be clear unless you're using Blue Creeper, um, which I'm using, but your sewing machine oil is probably going to be clear. Um, this is called your hook. This little pointy end here, this is what picks up the thread and rotation when it's coming around. So this is what forms your stitch. This is very sharp. It will cut you and it will stab you. Um, I do have a number of scars on my hands from this over the years. But most manuals are going to tell you this is the only point on your machine that you need to oil yourself unless you have a specialty machine. You're going to put one drop of oil right here on the ledge. And when I say one drop, I literally mean just the one drop. You do not want to squirt oil. You don't want to flood it. Just literally this one little drop and what's going to happen is that drop of oil is going to distribute through the whole thing and that's what rides on this metal. So once you have your one drop of oil you can tilt your machine back and there's only one way that this hook can fit in there. You can see that it nests really well. Um, this is your carrier here. This is what drives the hook and then it sits and completes the circle. So you'll know I mean it's it's there's only one way for it to go and then this is called your hook retainer. And this is going to go in. I'm sorry that I have to block the camera to show you this, but um, the hook needs to sit in there. I just messed it up. So the hook is sitting in here, and I'm going to put this retainer. There's only one way it can go. You can see there's a little post here, and there's a notch down there. So you're going to put this in there, and it's going to sit nice. And then You'll know it's in the right because these will slide back into place. You see there's little little indentations here. Those slide over and go right in. And that's literally it. So then you'll go ahead and turn your hand wheel a few times. Make sure you're not threaded. But turn your hand wheel a few times and it's going to distribute that oil all through that hook and help, uh, help it move a little smoother. So I recommend doing that every time you change a bobbin anyway. 
um, and that keeps it nice and clean. So for this and more tips, follow us on YouTube and Facebook at Sewing Doc. And thank you, and we'll talk to you soon.